Hey everyone, this is Mark Ryan coming at you with another video. Now, today I woke up, I saw that I had a notification from, um, I think it's Tariq, I think that's how you pronounce his name, the Bible teacher. Um, and so he made a video defending Marcus Rogers, and I have to respond to it basically. Now, I'm going to show this video clip of Tariq Patrick, I think that's how you pronounce his name again, um, but he's basically coming to Marcus Rogers defense. Hey, we need to show tolerance. And it, 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 it gets worse than that in that he's saying, Hey, um, if you reject Marcus Rogers, you reject Jesus Christ and Kate up true, go check out that channel, subscribe to it. Um, he pointed that out and, um, that's very concerning. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but let's take a look at this. Welcome back guys to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about why Marcus Rogers is a Christian. Okay, we'll stop there. He's not a Christian when someone denies the Trinity, they're not a Christian. Uh when so and teaches falsely on it and and all that stuff and we could go into that even more. Marcus Rogers believes Jesus Christ is inferior to God the Father. Uh, he's not a Christian. Marcus Rogers denies that the Holy Spirit is a person. And so Tariq Patrick here believes, hey, you can deny the Holy Spirit as a person and you're a Christian. Really, Tariq? Really? You really believe that? And hey, you can deny that or you can profess that Jesus Christ is inferior to God the Father and you're a Christian. Really? So if he's consistent, Muslims also assert that Jesus Christ is, hey, he's just a great prophet. He is inferior to God the Father. So did the Pharisees. Many of the Pharisees asserted that Jesus Christ is not equal with God the Father. Well, we can put Marcus Rogers in that camp and every cult in that camp because what do cults do? Cults, at the end of the day, they deny the Trinity. They deny, and it's an attack on the deity of of Jesus Christ. We see it with uh, Muslims. We see it with Mormons. We see it with Jehovah's Witness. We see it with one is Pentecostals, every cult out there. And so we can lump Marcus Rogers in with, with Muslims who also attack the deity of Jesus Christ. And we can lump in Tariq Patrick in with them as well, who, who says, yeah, all the, hey, this cult that denies the deity of Jesus Christ they're, they're saved. They're Christians. Um, and he goes beyond that in that, hey, people who are rebuking Marcus Rogers saying he's not saved, he's not a minister of God. Well, they're not Christians. And so when I hear that, then, hey, for me, a light bulb clicks on and says, hey, I, I'm not treating you as a brother in Christ. Why? Because I'm taking you for what you're saying, for the words that are coming out of your mouth. And why I support him. Let's get right into this video. If you reject Marcus Rogers as a Christian, as a servant, as a minister, as a pastor, and you reject the people that are going towards that direction, you are rejecting Christ. Okay, <laughs> this is, whoa, uh, let's take a, a look at this real quick. Um, if someone were to say, hey, Mark, I, sake of woods, I... I reject him or I'm not a fan of his ministry or whatever. I wouldn't say, well, um, you reject sake of woods. You're rejecting Christ. You're not saved. I wouldn't do that. If someone said, hey, Mark, I'm rejecting your your pastor, at your church or something. I, I don't like the guy, something like that. I wouldn't go and say, well, you reject my pastor. You've rejected Jesus Christ. I wouldn't do that. Uh, but what cults like to do is, is, hey, there's this cult leader, and you reject the cult leader, you've rejected Jesus Christ. And that's what Tariq Patrick has done here, is there's this cult leader, Marcus Rogers, who has set himself in the place of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you reject Marcus Rogers, you've rejected Jesus Christ. And we heard that with Chris Ferguson, saying all the nonsense stuff that came out of his mouth. I still can't believe some of the things that came out of his mouth. Talking about the government shall be upon his shoulders. Well, that refers in, in the Bible to Jesus Christ. But it sounds like he's, he's attributing that to 
um, Marcus Rogers and talking about the key of David um, with, with Marcus Rogers. And then he's talking to gates and doors and inanimate objects, which I don't get. I, I really didn't get much of that, <laughs> but it's fairly, Hey, he'll raise the dead. He'll do even crazier things, signs and wonders um, will accompany Marcus Rogers. And, and so what I'm saying though, is that Marcus Rogers is essentially putting himself in the place of Jesus Christ. And Hey, Marcus Rogers has said uh, multiple times, if, if you think I'm not of God or whatever, then the spirit of God is not within you. In other words, he's echoing or Tariq is echoing Marcus Rogers here. Um, if you don't think the spirit of God is in Marcus Rogers, this cult leader and false teacher, then you are not a, a Christian. That is this cult's argument that's going on right now. And we have to reject it. And honestly, kind of, kind of laugh at it. Hey, this is what cults do. <laughs> this is what cults do. Um, they, they set their cult leader in the throne, um, Christ's throne. And if you reject the cult leader, you've rejected Christ. And that's not biblical. Um, whoa, it, it's really slanderous is what it is. I want to show this short video clip from Dr. Steve Lawson. Who is he? He's a rock solid Bible teacher. Um, he has Bible studies on YouTube. Um, pretty short. I think about 10 minutes, most of them, maybe 15. Um, but it'll take a verse and go into the depth of the meaning of that one verse. Uh, and so this one will talk about the Trinity. And so I wanted to play this real quick because I, I think it's very important. This is very important, I think, because there are well-known... And they're talking about the Trinity right here, the doctrine of the Trinity. The beginning of the video, they they go through, I think it's Matthew 28, 19, and what that means. Um, baptized in the name, that's singular, of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Um, let's keep going. Quote, Bible teachers yeah. that we would think our, our viewing audience would think, yes, they're like us, they believe like us. But if you peel back the curtain and you say, what do you believe in the Trinity? They're exposed. Yeah. And you and I are talking about um, they believe in, and, and it's amazing whether it's Bible teachers or people that knock at your door, they break down at the Trinity. And one of the ways, if you'll talk about mm -hmm. this, is, is this term modalism. Yeah. And it is scary because you can sit in the pews. We had a caller. Yeah, I remember. You remember that? Yeah, I do And he remember. said, hey, hey, I've got a Bible teaching preacher, but he, he believes in modalism. Yeah. And if you would explain that. Yeah. And we said, you got to get out of the church. And he didn't really. Yeah, immediately out of that yeah. church. So you might explain how there's yeah. a distortion. Yeah, Kent, you put your finger on the live nerve. Modalism is an ancient heresy. Mm -hmm. And a heresy is very serious mm -hmm. because there's a difference between... So in other words, modalism is an ancient heresy. It's nothing new. The church confronted it um, a long time ago. Same thing with oneness, Pentecostalism. Um, it attacks the Trinity. In other words, it attacks the deity of Jesus Christ, the deity of the Holy Spirit. It's nothing new. Um, it's happened hundreds, even a thousand, two thousand years ago. Um, the church has been through this. Um, error and heresy. Heresy will damn your soul. Mm -hmm. You can have a different interpretation of church government, let's say, or baptism or something like that. But with a heresy, you're outside the gospel and you're outside the kingdom of God. And that exposes you as a false teacher. Yeah, you are a false teacher. No matter what you say. Yeah, no matter what else you say that's good, no matter what your TV ratings are. Yeah. And modalism teaches that there is only one, one person in the Trinity mm -hmm. and that sometimes that one person is the Father, but at other times he just changes hats. Different modes. Different modes, exactly. And he comes across or represents himself as the Son, but then at other times the same person, it's almost like he changes uniform or changes modes or or um, representations, and he's the Holy Spirit. But there's only, it's one God with one person. And that is just damnable. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because it denies the deity of, the, of Jesus Christ. If you deny the deity of Jesus Christ, I can assure you, you're not a Christian. You, yeah. You're outside the yeah. faith. No matter what you say. No matter what else you may say. And, and listen to that. No matter what else you say, you deny the, the Trinity. In other words, you deny the deity of Jesus Christ, the deity of the Holy Spirit. You're outside of Christianity, no matter what else you have to say or uh, Tariq. Uh, no matter how many devils you cast out of people, um, a person denies the Trinity. And that's what cults do. Cults deny the Trinity. We could look at Islam. They deny the Trinity. And they, they point to Christians. And they say, hey, you guys are a bunch of polytheists. We could point to other religions where um, there's an assault on the Trinity again. Hey, um, God created Jesus Christ. Well, no, that's outside of Christianity as well. Why? That denies the Trinity, that Jesus Christ is co-eternal with God the Father. Um, and so Mormonism, Islam, one is Pentecostalism, two is outside of Christianity. And part of the concern that I have is talking to many Pentecostals, many uh, people that seem to like they're, they're in the faith, it seems like they're rock solid, um, but it, it seems like many of them believe, oh, oneness, folks. They just don't like using the word Trinity. They're Christians too. And we need to solidly rebuke that, solidly refute that. And if you deny the, whole, the deity of the Holy Spirit, the same is true. And that's what modalism does. And there are popular teachers today who, who just are theologic, theologically untaught. Uh, they're self-taught. And they just listen. They have been taught as they listen to other people teachers and preachers, it's just a perpetuation of heretical teaching. And so we have to have our antenna up. Yeah, we, I, do you think, Steve, we should, our listening audience, yeah. if they go to a new church, one of the places they should start is, what do you believe about the Trinity? Yeah, Don't you think? I, I would basically begin there. Or anybody. Yeah. It, it, without, in other words, if, if you're going to the church and they do not believe in the Trinity, Leave that church. Do not go to a church that does not teach the Trinity. That is not a, a church that has God's smile upon it. Zero churches that deny the Trinity have God's smile upon it. Zero. Um, and it will, it will always be zero, and it must always be zero. Uh, be, why? Because there's an assault on the deity of Jesus Christ, an assault on the deity of the Holy Spirit going on. Without that. Without that, everything else is askew. So, Kent, thank you for bringing that up, and that really puts the rubber down where it meets the road. So, I trust that you are airtight in your understanding of the, what the Bible teaches about the Trinity, the triunity of God. The message here is Jesus Christ showed tolerance. Let's see why. Okay, so question, uh, Tariq. Did he, does he show tolerance for false teachings? teachings, false teachers, false prophets. And on, in the great white throne judgment, does Jesus Christ show tolerance there um, for people that deny the Trinity and attack the deity of Jesus Christ? Is there, is there tolerance there or are they cast into hell? Um, and so I almost bet that their theology on hell is off as well. Just book it. It is. I'd assert that, actually. Okay, this is a weird version. I don't even know what version this is. Huh. Christian workers outside your group rejoice when, when they are able to bring people to Christ. The right to greatness is not exclusive right. It's not an exclusive right. John knew. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't get it. If someone is a legitimate brother in Christ, yeah, we can have unity there. But from Scripture, from all of Scripture, the totality of Scripture, we know that uh, cult leaders, we don't have unity with them. And uh, they don't have the Spirit of God within them. They're not regenerate. Um, they don't love God. They actually hate God. And they're at enmity with God. They're at war against God. Um, and so we, we see here with Tariq, there's this really bad exegetical thing going on. Hey, Marcus Rogers, this cult leader who's at war with the deity of Jesus Christ, 
Um, he, there's no difference between him and this man that we're reading here in the text. Uh, the man was a ministering in the name of Christ. John wanted to find out if they were right in forbidding others to preach in Jesus' name. John felt that there were, there were bound to be limits to what Jesus was saying. Certainly, not everyone was to be received and welcomed and brought to Jesus. Some people follow us not with us. Who were saying Marcus was a different, untrained, uneducated, immoral, doctrinally unsound? Who was saying? Okay, and are those things true? <laughs> doctrinally unsound, yeah. Just book it. Uh, book it. False God, false gospel. Um, and Tariq Patrick, I don't think you know what the gospel is because the gospel, again, is we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. There's no saving grace found outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, his work upon the cross. Uh, whereas Marcus Rogers would say, nope, you're wrong. And if, if you're not baptized, you will be damned. And if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. Uh, and so that is a denial of the gospel. And again, you can put every other religion out there. They add works, human achievement. That, that The Reformation was all about this, where Catholicism had added so many things you got to do to be saved. And that's what false religions do. And one is Pentecostalism is a false religion with a false gospel. Um, Tariq Patrick would say, nope, he has the same gospel um, that Marcus Rogers has. There's only one saving gospel. The scripture is very clear on that. And so for Tariq Patrick to say, you know, Marcus Rogers, he's he's a Christian and he's a, a genuine uh, pastor, minister. Um, he has the gospel. Tariq has the gospel. They have the same gospel. Well, Tariq, I believe you there. You do have the same false gospel as Marcus Rogers. I believe you there. In that unruly, unauthorized, too far to the right or too far to the left. What Jesus said was pointed and clear, yet it is so difficult for us. Okay, so this sounds like really emotional arguments, not biblical arguments coming <laughs> in this video. Um, emotional arguments, nothing biblical. To accept. Jesus said, forbid him not. Jesus also said, he that is not against us is for us. Okay, and so that's so weird. Hey, Jesus is is right there. He who is not against us is for us. Well, Marcus Rogers, is he against uh, the Lord Jesus Christ or for him? Well, he assaults the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, asserting that he is inferior to God the Father. Why? Because he's not equal with God the Father. I've got a video on this. Uh, many people have dived into the, the heresy that Marcus Rogers has been confronted on refuses to repent, refuses to obey the Bible. He's an ongoing, abiding, continual rebellion against God. He's a false teacher. He is a, a cult leader, and no one should follow him, and no one should be scratching their head thinking, man, is Marcus Rogers, is he legitimate or not? It's very, very obvious. It, it could not be more obvious uh, with the things coming in, out of his mouth, and I've done by now, it's 20 to 30 videos on it. Uh, 10 that are probably like very just theologically just refute his false God, his false gospel, um, his denial of, of everything the Bible stands for, the five solas, uh, these kind of things. And so, Tariq Patrick, do you believe in the five solas? I would assert you obviously do not believe in the five solas. That we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, revealed in Scripture alone, for the glory of God alone. You rebel against the five solas. You deny them. Um, you might profess to believe in them, sure, but you deny them with your theology and with your embrace of cult leaders and heretics and false teachers. Believers, Jesus said against us. Jesus is his fo his followers are one the man who stands against us stands against jesus and he who stands against jesus stands against us okay and so do false 
teachers and cult leaders, do they stand with Christ or against Christ? Um, it, it's fairly, fairly obvious. And I don't think it is obvious to Tariq Patrick because I think there's unity between him and Marcus Rogers. I think they, they probably believe in a lot of the same things. And he, he'll go on to, to stand with Marcus Rogers and say, hey, if you reject Marcus Rogers, you reject Jesus Christ, um, which is very disturbing. How can anyone that will say that they are biblically sound? And, have- and by the way, um, in the Steve Lawson clip, it's very important that um, he talked about two things. And I, I like the way that he structures it. Uh, there's heresy, which is damnable. And then there's error. People can be in error and still be safe, still be a Christian. Uh, But then there's heresy, which is damnable. And Marcus Rogers is not just in error. He's in error and he's in heresy as well, Uh, where again, he denies the Trinity. He denies the gospel. Um, That's heresy that places him outside of the uh, the Christian faith. Again, like Steve Lawson said, it, it doesn't matter what your TV ratings are. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you, you have, uh, how many people love you and adore you. When you deny the Trinity and when you deny the, the triune gospel of grace, um, you're outside of um, Christianity. And nothing else matters. It doesn't matter if um, I think one of the arguments he'll make in the video is he Marcus Rogers casts out devils. Um, and people go to his so-called church and Marcus Rogers will cast out devils, maybe out of every member of his church. I don't know if they all have devils or if it's just some, maybe it's all of them. Who knows? Um, which would seem weird if, if all of your church has devils in it, um, that'd be pretty troubling actually, because a demon cannot possess a Christian. But Tariq's argument, if I remember right, or others have argued it, Hey, Marcus Rogers, he's casting out demons. Um, well, when you deny the Trinity, nothing else that you say or, or do matters. You're outside of, of Christianity. We don't, you're going to say a lot of um, Bible things. Yet yeah, False teachers do that. They really do that. But cults assault the deity of Jesus Christ. And we see that with Marcus Rogers. And now we're seeing that from Tariq Patrick as well, as he is defending heresy here. Um, and he is assaulting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, make no mistake about it. That's what Tariq Patrick is doing here. Have doctrine, have missed this. How could you say you missed this? In Luke chapter 10, verse 10 to 11, it says, but if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into the street and say, dust of your town from our feet to show that we have abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. Why do you think Marcus Rogers won't talk to you about doctrine? Why? Let me answer your question. Biblically, he don't have to because you have biblically. So biblically, when someone is accused of, of heresy, which Marcus Rogers has been accused of, and he teaches, he, he, he hasn't repented. He continues in that to this day. Well, um, a true teacher would uh, or a true believer would, oh man, I was wrong. I shouldn't have taught that. They would repent of that. Um, Christ's sheep hear his voice. They follow after him and they don't remain in heresy and, and these kind of things. They uh, Maybe there's a, a season where a, a believer is in error there, um, and, and th- but then they're confronted on it and they repent on it and they hear the voice of the shepherd and they begin to preach and teach rightly on it. Well, Marcus Rogers, he's been confronted many, 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 many times by mature believers, many of them who are more mature than me. And he still is in this ongoing, unrepentant, abiding rebellion against God. And so it could not be more clear here. Have already rejected Christ and showed intolerance to his followers, the pastor, the minister, the servants, you don't hear me? You don't see me? The Holy the Holy Bible can help you with that. Now you see the... And so, Tariq Patrick, I don't expect you to respond to this video at all. I really don't. Do you put Mormons inside of Christianity too who, who say Jesus Christ is inferior to God the Father just like Marcus Rogers does, but they'll say that he was 
created by God, right? Isn't that what Mormonism teaches? I'm not an expert in Mormonism by any means. Um, but is that within uh, the Christianity as well? Do you believe that too? Um, what about Islam, who also teaches that Jesus Christ is inferior to God the Father, just like Marcus Rogers teaches and believes? Um, is Islam, hey, are they Christians as well? They profess to believe in God. They believe that Jesus Christ was a good prophet. And so, uh, hey, I'm a little confused here. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses and, and other folks, um, are they within Christianity as well? Uh, I'm, I'm interested to know this because if you're consistent with your theology, hey, people that believe Jesus Christ is inferior to God the Father um, and not co-eternal and do not believe that the Holy Spirit is a person but as an it. And whenever I hear Marcus Rogers refer to the Holy Spirit, it's always as an it. It is never as a he. And as believers, we know the Holy Spirit is a person. Um, in scripture, we've seen, hey, Ananias, you lied to the Holy Spirit. You have lied to God. You lie to a person, not a force, not a whatever uh, cults believe the Holy Spirit to be, which is an it, not a person or a he, um, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. You grieve a person. Um, it, it could not be any more clear in scripture. And for Tariq to not see that one is Pentecostalism is an a, a attack and a denial of the Holy Spirit um, and to unite in error, in heresy um, against those confronting it um, is very troubling, very troubling. Now you've seen the teacher of me. Let me show you the prophet. Let's go. Scripture says, when you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter a home, give it your blessing. If it, if it turns out to be worthy home, let your blessing stand. If it is not, take back your blessing. Scripture also says, if any household town refuses to welcome you, Listen to your or listen to your message. Shake its dust from your. So I think that Marcus Rogers, he's echoing Marcus Rogers here, I think, um, in that Marcus has come out and said, I I'm tired of people who will not take a stand with me, uh, probably because, you know, a lot of professing Christians like Ruslan, Alan Parr, um, uh, he, Marcus Rogers used to be able to blend in within Christianity a lot easier, but lately he's been called out and not even, not even Ruslan or Alan Parr will come to Marcus Rogers defense right now. They've abandoned their, their, their brother. They, um, really sad, really sad, really. But, um, and, and so Tariq really doesn't want to address the, the tough issues. He, he's just kind of tap dancing a lot. Hey, Tariq, go, go address the, the actual issues that should be addressed. Go address those things, right? The Bible also says, Then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. Anyone who rejects, rejects you is rejecting me. Anyone who rejects me is rejecting me. So anyone who, <laughs> and he, he is using this verse, twisting it, radically twisting it to assert, hey, you reject Marcus Rogers, you're not, you're rejecting Jesus Christ, you're not saved. Uh, in other words, it would seem like to me, um, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. God and who sent me. The Bible also says anyone who isn't with me, with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. The Bible also says, no one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love the other. You will be, you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. First Corinthians chapter eight, verse 12 says it clearly. And when you sin against other believers by encouraging them to do something they believe is wrong, you are sinning against Christ. And so what about, um, Hey, Tariq, where Marcus Rogers goes to baptize a per, a, a per, someone who is, my understanding, a professing Christian, but nope, that didn't count, wasn't in the name of Jesus only, and you didn't believe whatever stuff Marcus Rogers says. And so we got to rebaptize you in the name of Jesus only. That soldier goes on to 
um, to die. Um, what are what are your thoughts on that, by the way? And do you believe in baptism in the name of Jesus only? It sounds like you're saying, "Hey, that's um, that's within Christianity as well." And so, in other words, you have a lot of explaining to do because you're embracing so much heresy here with Marcus Rogers. Understand? Um, it, it's not just one heresy, but man, I've lost track of how many heresies he believes in. And so for you to defend uh, that much heresy, that much heresy is a very disturbing, very troubling sign. Uh, So much so that I will not even treat you as a brother in Christ when you are united with that much heresy. You need to repent. Marcus Rogers, I support you, soldier, and keep doing your thing. Okay, you support a cult leader and a false teacher and a false prophet. We get it. Boot you, sir. Now, that's really all that I had to say here. If you made it this far, please like this video. Um, but when someone believes in heresy, it, it just doesn't stay in one place. It bleeds everywhere. We see that with Marcus Rogers. His theology is so, so twisted. So it's a mess. It is a um, a bloody, bloody mess, his theology is. And for Tariq Patrick to defend this mess that's going on, all this heresy that, that's bleeding everywhere, and it's not just one heresy, it's heresy stacked upon heresy stacked upon heresy, uh, for him to say, hey, if you reject Marcus Rogers, the cult leader, false prophet, um, false teacher, um, then you're rejecting Jesus Christ. Well, um, that is Whoa, that's what cults do. You reject the cult leader, uh, you reject Jesus Christ. And so, Tariq Patrick, I would encourage you to disassociate fully from Marcus Rogers and reject all these heresies that he's embraced. And it it looks like you've embraced them too because you've united with Marcus Rogers and all the heresies that he teaches, saying that that honors God. One can be saved believing in all those heresies. Um, And so with that, hey, I will see you guys in the next video.